Hey guys, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Today I am in my crawl space area. This is an area that we built under our front porch so that we'd have some storage. But we also put in some electrical stuff so we could actually have some plant lights and use this as kind of a growing area for some of our seed starts. That way we're not taking up room in the house and stuff for it. Uh, I eventually hope to get this area cleaned up, add some shelves and different things on it. I've got two sets of shelves in here right now. I've got a four foot set back over here behind me and then this is a, about a three foot wide set of four shelves on it too. But what I'm doing today is I'm doing a lighting upgrade. I received some plant lights that I want to give a try and these are made by Barina and they're actual grow lights that use a combination of the red and blue light here in, in addition to the regular white spectrums to create a really nice full spectrum set of lights. So they came in a four pack so I'm going to get these set up here but first let me just show you what I actually have been using as plant lights. So for a very long time, I used these kind of lights here, which house a fluorescent sort of light in them. And that's that's because that's what we had. We didn't have LED lights at the time when we were doing all this. And since then, I've up, upgraded to a lot of LED type of T8 type fixtures that we can put into these uh, different ballasts right here. But beyond that, I actually upgraded last year to this set right here, which is just a white spectrum shop LED light. And they were very cheap. I just bought them off of Amazon. They work all right. They do a decent enough job for it, but they only have the white spectrums. They do create a little bit of heat when you touch them up here, but that's pretty normal for most of these type of lights. It's a little bit of a myth that LED lights don't create heat because the electronics in them actually does. So I'm not sure how that all translates as far as efficiency goes, but there is some heat that gets created and the plants can benefit from that heat. In fact, they do need some heat. For that, I've got these heat mats here. Uh, that's a 48 by 20 inch heat mat. And basically on this shelf here, I can fit about four different flats that are like this. These T, I'm uh, sorry, these uh, 1020 flats that I like to use. That's a, a set of mums that I actually never did anything with. They all got rooted. They all rooted well, but I didn't have a place for them. So I'm not actually going to use them. I'll probably just throw them in the compost bin at this point. But anyway, I've got this shelf here. I've been using those LED ones. They connect pretty well through this type of a connection here, but the Barina ones actually have something that I think I like a lot better. I'll show you that here in a minute. See, the ends of the Barina ones have a standard plug here, so I can daisy chain four of these together just using the regular old plugs here. The LED ones actually had very short cords, so it was really hard to go between them if I had any kind of space. And as you can see here, I've got some pretty good length on here. I probably have about a four foot length of cord on this light fixture. So I can get those four daisy chained together, shelf to shelf, probably just do one per shelf. I may set up three shelves. I may only set up two on this one and then maybe two on the other one and just see how that goes. So the Brina light fixtures all came with this little packet of different parts. And in that packet, you've got different ways you can connect them. You've got some zip ties and you got these little clips here. I think I'm gonna try those little clips to connect it here. They also came with a little bit of a chain with a little bit of a clip on it so you can clip to the clip and uh, get that all hooked up. They even came with a little bit of drywall anchors if you're hitting into drywall or something like that. So as you can see, there's no drywall around down here. It's just all concrete block. And we're just putting it on these shelves anyway. So we'll attach it to the shelf, let them hang down, and just kind of adjust it how we want it to go as far as the height is on it. So with this light fixture, let me just show you here, uh, see how well you can see this. You can see on this fixture, there are lots of little tiny LED lights here, some with a W, some with a C, some with an R over here. So you've got your red, you've got your cayenne, and you've got your white light spectrums that are all kind of put together on this array. So that's how that all kind of functions and gives you all that that broad spectrum light. And I'll put some details in the description on these so you can actually see uh, what types of lighting you're getting off of this. All right, each one of these comes with a cord that you can, that has a switch on it. And so by switching it here, you can see it's a really nice looking warm light compared to kind of the cold LED light up here. And that's due to the red and the blue being 
uh, included into this light fixture. So we'll go ahead and get these put up and you can see kind of what the difference is here. So here you can see how the light casts all across the shelf area. It encompasses the entire shelf side to side all the way to the end. I am planning to raise it up a couple notches to make sure we've got better overall coverage on that shelf and I'll take down the other LED lights that I've got up there. My plan is to start doing some seedlings so that we can transfer them into the vegetable garden. Some leafy greens, mustard greens, lettuces, kales, different things of that nature so, so that we have something that we can grow over the winter. Uh, at least we can do that some here in Tennessee with a little bit of protection and be able to harvest that as we go. So I've got these two light fixtures set up, one on each shelf here. I still have the LEDs up, but they're turned completely off, so you're just seeing the light from the Barina ones. Now, something that's kind of nice about it is it's got these little switches that hook up between the daisy chain uh, cords, so that when you're going light to light, you could actually switch one of them off. So say you're not using that section for a while, you can just cut it off, but leave everything plugged in. So that's kind of neat and handy but it looks like a pretty good light spectrum coming off of them. And the real test though will be how does it help the plants grow? So we will see the blue light tends to allow leafy growth, uh, your greens and stuff really enjoy that. And then your red spectrum is a little bit more on the fruiting side of things. So we're not really worried about getting fruit off of the plants in here, more about getting the plants started so that they can go outdoors. But if you're in a situation where you're actually growing the food indoors, you're gonna want that red light spectrum in on your lights. Now the lights did also come with a timer, so you can definitely use that if you want to. I've got a different timer I'm gonna use because it's actually got two outlets on it instead of just the one that's on this particular one, but it's a pretty standard, uh, normal type of timer that you just plug in and then you set your time accordingly. That can be handy if you don't have one, uh, but there might be some better options out there as far as timers go. The Barina lights use about 72 watts. Uh, the lights I was using use 50 watts each, so I was effectively using 100 watts per shelf that I was running them on. So, I figure the Barina light could save me a little bit as far as electric cost goes if I can just use the one per shelf on it. Our power is probably around 12 cents per kilowatt hour and if I run these for 12 hours a day over the course of 30 days, we're looking at about $3.11 per light fixture that I choose to use. So for seed choices, I put in Pablo, which is a lettuce. This was a free gift from Baker Creek when I ordered there. And then there's this Henderson's Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce. Dinosaur Kale. Kale is delicious. And then this one's pretty much the same thing as Dinosaur Kale. So we did two of those. Definitely, we love our cilantro around here. And I dropped one here, which is a Japanese Giant Red Mustard. Very delicious. And I'm using this plastic lid, which doesn't fit perfectly because of the little flats that are, the little cell trays that are inside, but I can kind of squeeze it in and around and get it to work okay for what I need it to do. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the tray up here on the top shelf. I don't have anything on the second shelf. My plan is basically to just keep doing this sequentially every week or two weeks, put together another flat. And by that time, this flat will be ready to go out in the garden. And then the next flat will be started. And then I can go ahead and add the next one every couple of weeks. So hopefully using that strategy, we can have a constant supply of nice green veggies. And so there is my plant light upgrade. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the red and blue color spectrums of light enhance the growth of these vegetable starts. We'll have these for the fall and then in the springtime, actually more like January and February, I'll be starting my tomato plants and we'll see how those grow uh, under these kind of lights compared to these LED lights that I've done in the past. But the LED lights I'll still use for my plant propagation because when they don't have roots, they don't really need the red and blue light. So we'll just go ahead and continue doing what we've been doing. And then once they do have roots, we can move them over here to these plant shelves or transplant them outdoors, however we feel is gonna be the best way to go. So I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. I really appreciate you watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you thought this was helpful. And we'll catch you next time here on Growing the Home Garden.